guys how are you i hope you're fine it is a sad moment it is just two days after the tragedy that happened at and the russia boys an academy that is quite um you know enhancing in terms of uh, academics now this is not the first fire actually from what i've watched around we have so many schools which have experienced fire and death of many students from two to as many as 70 so we have uh, Changuli in Machakos, Bombolulu, you had that in Mombasa, Asumbi in Nyanza, Mazera in Coast, and so many other schools have had such incidences. Even under Russia boys again, there is a time they saw uh, they lost two souls to fire. Now, what do we learn from this? Actually, it's not about uh, the incident itself happening and us talking about it just like that, but we have to check on why this is happening. And particularly, I've been in schools, huh? just as I heard again from the Usawe um, leader, Dr. Manyasa, who is one of the stakeholders in the ministry talking. It is actually true that there is a lot of congestion. But again, I want to ask, do we blame the schools or the government? Because there is a time, even when teachers complain that the schools are so congested and it's very impossible, you know, like I teach languages and it has become difficult to handle many students. Like how do you mark books? Like 80 books in a class, another class also 80, another. You teach three classes and each has 80 students. How do you mark their books every day and ensure you return in time and they use it? How do you even reach each child? Is it even possible to know every child? So do we blame students, uh, the, the, the teachers, the parents or the government on this because if they say it is 100 percent transition and the school again is uh, struggling to deal with this aspect of um, you know allocation of money so whom do we blame so actually uh, the, we have standards of the ministry which have to be complied to and of course if you love life then you will comply to them no matter what then emergency drills. I don't know how government, many schools have the done Ministry of this, Education, so for that matter, ought to take seriously um, in, in as far as uh, these institutions are concerned. First, my, my thesis is that there was violations on the standard guidelines. And the reason I say this is because we do research in schools and we have seen that very few schools are actually complying with the guidelines uh, on what the spacing in the dormitory, the, the doors, the windows, the exits, the emergency prepare, preparedness. Very few schools are complying. Majority of our boarding schools are not complying. So that, that means that, yes, while the fire breakout may have been an accident, a lot more could have been done to save the children if compliance had been met. But a number of things need to be done one of those things that must be done from this tragedy and be the transformation that we have waited for is to open up schools for scrutiny it is very interesting that our boarding schools do not even allow parents of the children who board in those schools to see where their children sleep so when a, a school parents meeting is called parents will be allowed to walk all over the compound shown which fence needs to be repaired which library needs to be built but they will never be allowed to see the dormitories i do not understand how that even works that a parent who pays fees who is the parent of the child that someone else will tell them they have no right to see where their child sleeps and that is actually like the standard practice around our boarding schools, that the parents are not allowed to access dormitories, even on the official days when they are being hosted in school. That should cease forthwith. I want to see that the next school meetings being held, parents are able to see where their children are sleeping. Two, I think that schools have not prioritized mm -hmm. safety of children. That's why schools most I can say this without any doubt. Most of our boarding schools are, have extremely congested dormitories. We now have children sleeping on a triple decker, mm -hmm. three beds in one column. And we have dormitories with 
beds right from the door. So that all this while, while this fire is such a tragedy, the deaths could have been worse if it happened in a different school. Right. Some of which I know. Mm. Where children have to crawl through other children's beds to get to their own. And indeed, even as... Again, it's the, yes. contrary to the guidelines that have been provided, what is happening in the dormitories is those dormitories are mostly just death traps in which children survive by God's grace. Mm. And parents are not allowed access. I do not know if Ministry of Education officials are allowed access because I'm told some principals run schools the way they want. No one uh, has any oversight over them. We do not know really who had the final say on what safety measures should be taken to protect children. Now, Dr. When we conducted this, one of the surveys last year, we found that okay. for very many schools, they have they had never done uh, a fire preparedness uh, test drill for learners. They had never done that. So, so learners who had been in the school from from one to from four mm. had never gone through a fire drill to right. know that if there is fire, this is how you respond. Right. So again, at that it means schools are not doing their best to protect children, and I think that the Ministry of Education is not doing enough to enforce its own guidelines in schools. All right, indeed. All right, so you can much. actually see we have a lot to learn, maybe to the schools, to even parents, and uh, to the Ministry of Education, because now from observation, it is um, indicated that in some schools now we have three, yeah, the triple decker where students sleep. The preparedness and such incidents is not even there. We find that drills on uh, maybe how to approach fire is not there. Now, in this video, I hope to attach something from Uganda about uh, children practicing drills. I hope you'll see that again and learn from it. So, uh, the only thing we have to learn is to how to actually prevent fire. Yeah, so let's watch and I hope you've subscribed to my channel. If you've not, do so and uh, press on the notification bell. Kwa majina naitwa Patrick Gekadi na niko na mtoto Hillside na wakati nilipata ripoti kuhusu huzu huo moto yenyewe nilistuka lakini Mungu alijalia kwamba ripoti haikuja kana kwamba sija haiko complete Mungu alijalia nikawa kuna mtu mmoja ambaye alikuwa amepigiwa ripoti na akabiwa mtoto wangu ako sawa na wake ako sawa kwa hivyo baadaye naye akanipigia akaniambia ya kwamba mtoto hata wangu ako sawa kwa hivyo nikashukuru Mungu mimi nimeshida hapo the whole day lakini hao watu wazazi wengi wameshida huko wakilia paka hata mimi machozi yananitoka kwa sababu siku anajua naweza kuabiaje siji kama mtoto ako hospitali ama ako amesakam kwa hivyo mimi nilitulia tu nilizidi tu kuwaoba ni kuoba nilishika tu rosari kuchita tu kwa rosari kwa mkono nikiwaobea ili at least Mungu awatulize kwa sababu mimi sina maneno ya kuwatuliza wameumia sana wakati alihisi hanja akitoka akaangalia akaona kuna moto akasikia pia kuna watu wengine wameanza kupiga duru kwa hivyo alivanya hima akaenda kuamsha watoto wengine akawaamsha bio bio akagucha saduku lake hiyo ndio watoto wasikie hiyo sauti wa wa mke kwa hivyo wakaamka bio bio wale walikuwa karibu na yeye wakaenda pamoja na yeye hakuweza kuelewa moto ile ilianza na mwana it's quite sad that parents lose their children kwa hivyo hakuna kitu anaweza eleza zaidi ya hiyo yale sometimes even though the accidents it is a uh, on an action forward to wa, prevent wa, such wa zambali, ya wema, you know, kuwa fatalities in future. So when I look at this situation, there are several lessons I'm learning, even if I were to start a school today, that I should avoid congestion in the dome. 
children shouldn't be sleeping on three king bed um, hata hata kama ni ni you know, tukizidi kwa barabara mugu and apart from that even the spacing between one bed and ajari. another you know uh, it's quite sad maybe from what cha kifo dr banyasi has said parents insist on seeing where your children sleep because you are paying for that money for your children to sleep in the same bed with you you know but from whatever is happening out there this to happen it's because they are hiding some things maybe they do not want to see the um, you know the lower situations in which their children will spend their rooms if they are congested and all that so i actually now understand why parents should go to the dorms and even see where their children sleep because security when it comes to security matters now you lose a child like the way the 18 parents have lost where will you get another child and will you even forget about it it is You know for those who understand the gist of this you know what kind of aeroplane these parents have boarded and actually they may be traumatized they may never be happy about their kids going to boarding school they may feel so insecure about such situations now i want actually to look at um, uh, the aspect of standards and uh, one of the standards i had on violation is congestion which i've talked about and maybe you can drop your comments and add expectations you need from schools what do you want schools to offer for the dorms yeah the in terms of sleeping what do you want them to offer to your child yeah preparedness you saw the drills in uganda actually that was just a video in which a school was teaching kids on how to react to fire it's not like anybody fainted there was no actual fire you saw that uh, they put the fire on a sufuria and lit it up in a dorm and nothing actually caught fire but the kids were to act as if there is an incident and some have fainted some are under the bed and so you can see those who have trained were running to save them carry them outside and as they were shouting they were not just shouting carelessly but they were actually telling them to wake up or uh, get out smoothly and uh, we had a, a matron there helping them to come out yeah and uh, finally there was a boy who helped in uh, uh, using the fire extinguisher so have you even checked whether the fire extinguishers in schools work even the teachers who are there the dorm mothers uh, let's say the hod dorm even the principal have you checked your dorms and seen whether that fire extinguisher is working and even if it is there do students know how to use it or do they just see it as a toy so they actually if something happens they'll be running around and they can't touch it or even use it to safeguard themselves now remember the fire started as early as 11 pm and uh, by 3 am they are struggling to put it off what does it mean it means maybe Uh, we don't have fire extinguishers in this school or even if they were there people don't know how to use them uh, remember schools should also have the numbers of those um, you know the emergency call numbers so that they can actually call for emergency help whenever necessary i don't know whether this school had those are some questions i'm asking now the other thing is um, maybe in prioritization of safety I don't know uh, whether it was rumors or actually true that this school they lock students from outside. I don't know whether that is true and if it is true that is very dangerous. The windows of course they should open towards outside even the doors. That is the those are the standards that I know the ministry placed. And the people from the ministry do you go to school to check actually and even open and ask such questions and insist and even come over see whether drills are being trained don't just sit in offices and big allowances you come to schools you harass maybe one teacher or two and then you go away sit for another year and come another year you are not helping if that is actually why you are in offices then you would rather just walk out because if such a situation happens it's not about the school it's not about the teachers it's even about you because if you are the minister of education and you are in that area what have you done eh? so those are the questions we actually are asking now i also had something about principals lacking oversight now i don't know what what happens because you find that there are people who are actually working very well 
but they may not be even maintained in a school even for three years. But there are those who are even running the schools down and they are there for 10 years or five. What happens actually? So it's about us in offices, whether it is TSE or Ministry of Education. If you are there, then actually help enhance the best than just be there to... Uh, maybe we here, we are not sure, I don't have evidence, but there are claims that those people who give fat checks to these offices, they can stay in schools forever and nobody will question them and nobody will even pull them out and they'll even mistreat teachers, the, they'll do whatever they want to the students, even to the parents, and nobody actually will touch them. So if this is true, then I think these are some of the things that are making situations like this happen in school. So if you have not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe because I'm longing for your subscription and uh, keep watching because I need those watch hours. Without them, then I'm actually not doing anything. So bye bye for now uh, for this sad situation. I just did this video so that I can show the lessons we should learn. It's not about just announcing that a fire has happened and nothing else is learned from it. Bye-bye.